The following video is sponsored by the Clean Chesapeake Coalition. To learn more, visit their website at www.cleanchesapeakecoalition.org. The Conowingo Dam was never considered. This is a huge problem. Counties across Maryland are spending billions of dollars per decade trying to clean up the pollution. The pollution coming down the Susquehanna River is just a major problem for the Chesapeake Bay. I am solely dependent on the, the environmental health and the success of the Chesapeake Bay. Everybody here is part of the problem and they need to be part of the solution. Watermen, yes, they are portrayed as these bandits, these people that just pillage and rape the bay and take whatever they want for their own needs. But no, they actually protect their resource and this is their income, this is their livelihood and they want to preserve it as best they can. Everybody has an idea how to fix the bay and they think that by stopping harvesting of oysters and by, you know, eliminating the watermen that everything is just going to come back. The last major episode that we've had at the Conowingo Dam where they had this huge influx of sediments and, and nutrients that were coming down the bay, it completely wiped out the fishery in the upper bay regions here. It is just basically a time bomb waiting to go off. Conowingo Dam itself is not the source of pollution. It is a hydroelectric dam, and it just so happens that all the water from the Susquehanna River flows through it. But because of the dam, it is an important factor in what's happening with the water quality of the bay. It has a reservoir above it that's 14 miles that is now full of sediment and other pollutants. And because of the way it alters the flow of the Susquehanna River, it is an absolute force to be reckoned with when it comes to figuring out how best to clean the Chesapeake Bay. Every time there's a big storm and all that sediment is thrust into the bay, it comes in shock-loading proportions. That's devastating because Mother Nature can't assimilate that much pollution in such a short period of time. One of the most cost-effective ways to clean the Chesapeake Bay is to get more oysters in the bay. I mean, that's Mother Nature's way of, of, of filtering the bay. Oysters can't run. They're, they're, they're there, they're at the bottom. If, if there's a lot of sedimentation, they're going to be smothered. And if we don't address the Conowingo factor, and we don't prepare for the next big storm event and the scouring that's going to occur, all of our investments downstream, and they're considerable, I mean, literally billions of dollars. All that will be for naught. I have been oystering, I guess, for 25 years. For the most part, that's 100% of my income is off this boat. Our bars are silting over tremendously every year. I mean, in, in, in my view, in my, in my experience, you know, places that were, for instance, maybe a hundred acre oyster bar is now down to five to 10 acres. Whatever we gotta do to make the water better is what we should do. That should, that should be a number one priority. You know, if Conowingo's it, if it's planting more oysters, whatever, we need to do it. There's lots of money that comes to the Chesapeake Bay, but it doesn't find its way to the bottom. This town is all but built on oyster shells. 
seafood business and primarily oystering at one time was uh, the heart of the economy. The early 70s, there was 132 oyster boats left out of here every morning. Tropical Storm Lee dumped 19 million tons of sediment within a one week period into the Chesapeake Bay. There were a myriad of reasons as to why, you know, the bay cleanup need to be looked at holistically. And the opportune moment came in 2011 after Tropical Storm Lee with all the runoff that came across the Conowingo Dam and the Clean Chesapeake made their calling card the satellite image of that event. This plume, visible 100 miles down to the mouth of the Potomac River, came after Tropical Storm Lee. And you can't deny just that visual, all that amount of pollution. You know, when that dam was built in the late 20s, that reservoir was about 120 feet deep. Today, it's only 10 to 14 feet in spots. The trapping capacity isn't there. Those of us that were in the business at the time, we knew that that was, uh, that was, the, that was the beginning of the end. This statue might be the only uh, piece of the oyster industry left. When confronted with very expensive mandates intended to improve the water quality of the Chesapeake Bay, a number of Maryland counties coalesced and formed the Clean Chesapeake Coalition. And the primary mission of the Clean Chesapeake Coalition was to pursue improvement to the water quality of the Chesapeake Bay in the most prudent and fiscally responsible manner possible. What we saw was that this is a huge factor. If some, something isn't done at the headwaters of the bay, one big storm event could wipe out any progress that has been made in the name of the bay cleanup. We look at the reservoir above Conowingo, that dredging that reservoir and keeping forever what's sitting above that dam, waiting to be scoured, getting it out of that reservoir and putting it somewhere else where it never gets into the waters of the Chesapeake Bay, you will in fact keep a large amount, an enormous amount of pollution out of the bay. The Japanese made a statement one time, give them the Chesapeake Bay, they feed the world. I thought that this coalition was a great idea because as county commissioner, I kept seeing us throw money at this bay cleanup problem year after year after year in such wasteful ways. The people in charge wanted to ignore those problems up there and they ignored them for 40 or 50 years um, until our coalition got together and pointed out that th this is the problem. Conowingo Dam is licensed by the federal government, uh, the, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC. While we're trying to do all these things to protect Maryland taxpayers and, and improve the, the Maryland portion of the bay, the hydropower industry, including Exelon, is busy lobbying Congress to try to change the law that gives the state of Maryland some say in the relicensing of Conowingo Dam. For Exelon and its industry to be busy trying to water down the ability of Maryland to regulate or put conditions on this, this facility just shows how, how uh, challenging this is. And I think that goes to what we're up against in trying to really help the Chesapeake Bay in the most prudent and cost-effective way. Now it's time to take responsibility for the environmental impacts of that flagship renewable energy facility being Conowingo. How Exelon reacts to those conditions and whether they embrace the Chesapeake Bay, that is the most important agency decision on the Bay Cleanup Continuum. Up to the Hogan administration being elected, all the former administration, nobody would touch it. They did, the environmental groups have a lot of political power. They were convincing the O'Malley's uh, administrations and them people that that's a red herring, they called it. That problem up to Conowingo, that's not something you have to worry about. There were environmental groups that um, thought we were crazy, bringing attention to the dam. Oh, it's not a problem, it's a red herring. Um, and now they're saying that trapping capacity is gone. There has to be something done behind the dam. 
and now they're saying, well, maybe they weren't so crazy after all. There's so many people that enjoy this Chesapeake Bay. I enjoy it just as much as you do. And, you know, and everybody has opinions. I understand the necessity for an electric generating plant. Um, and I know there's probably tremendous amount of profits that's built into that. Not, you know, taking ownership of that resource of electricity and making sure it's safe for everyone downstream. I, I think that, that should take precedence more than anything. This video was sponsored by the Clean Chesapeake Coalition. For more information, please visit www.cleanchesapeakecoalition.org.